Stephen Hawking, the man who transformed the way we understand the universe, is dead. He was 76 years old. Hawking, as you know, probed the mysteries of our universe and shaped cosmology as we know it today. He pushed limits and pushed past a debilitating disease that left him with severe physical limitations. Hawking defied the odds against ALS to become what many consider the greatest and most recognizable scientist of our age. Fellow theoretical physicists say a star just went out in the cosmos. Well, my next guest would agree. He studied for his PhD in theoretical physics under Hawking at the University of Cambridge. Imagine that. And he continued to work with him when Hawking was named the Distinguished Research Chair at the Perimeter Institute for Theoretical Physics, which is in Waterloo, Ontario. Raymond Laflamme is a world leader in theoretical physics on his own, and we have reached him in Waterloo. Raymond, it's probably very hard, harder for you to digest this news because you knew him, you were close with him. How are you doing today? Um, I'm doing okay. Oh, well, it, it is a sad day. But on the other hand, I think we should celebrate and reflect on an incredible life. Somebody who's totally inspiring. And inspired you, but also inspired, you know, regular normal people like me. How did he manage to do that when we're talking about theoretical physics, words I can't even spell? <laughs> well, for Stephen, it was important to communicate and communicate with a broad community. And that's how he wrote his famous uh, best-selling book, A Brief History of Time. And funnily, at the beginning, when he first published it, he was worried that nobody would read it. <laughs> and I, his publisher had told him that for every question that he would write in the book, the audience would be divided by two. <laughs> so he decided not to write any equation in the book, and he was a total uh, bestseller. <laughs> now, you met him back in 1984, and, I mean, you were, you're a smart guy. You were studying at the University of Cambridge. What was that meeting like, and did you have butterflies? <laughs> yes, I did. Um, th the program that I started at the University of Cambridge was a master program, a one-year course. There's no exams, so we have no idea how, how you're doing. And at the end of the year, suddenly you have a week of exam, a week break, and then you get the results. And I had no idea if I had failed or passed. And it turned out that I passed with distinction, was asked to go and meet the person in charge of the, the general relativity group in Cambridge. When I met him, he said, Stephen Hawking is waiting for you. He, he has been assigned as your supervisor. He was <laughs> on the third floor of the building. And I never thought that going downstairs was that hard. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. And you know what? When you're going to meet one of the smartest guys in the world, uh, you, you got to make sure you bring your A game. What did he say to you when you entered his office? He said, welcome. I'm glad to meet you. And me, I was so uh, struck and surprised. I had problem of adding one plus one, so I was really worried and went, after I got out that he would say, this guy is totally, totally dumb. But Stephen was very gracious. He, uh, he told me, okay, what's your plan for the summer? I told him I was going to go back to Quebec and see my parents. And he says, okay, here's some papers, read them. And then in October, when you come back for the term, then uh, we'll start talking about science. Now, Raymond, I'm wondering if you've described Stephen Hawking as gracious. I'm wondering if he was gracious when you were sent out to try to prove one of his mathematical theories, but instead you disproved it. I, I mean, how do you tell a guy like Stephen Hawking that he's wrong? <laughs> well, so Stephen, although being well-known and incredible reputation and many people looking up to him, is a scientist. And science is very democratic. At the end, you discuss ideas, and ideas can be right or wrong. The math in theoretical physics tells you what is right or what is wrong. So I slowly, painstakingly go through the math. And he would tell me, are you sure there you did the right thing? Are you sure you did the right approximation? And I would go back in my office, work for a week, and then come back and tell him, this is the result I got. And fortunately, there's a colleague who was an ex postdoctoral fellow of Stephen who came down page from the University of Edmonton in Alberta, who had a very similar result to mine. So we kind of gang up together and suddenly convinced Stephen. And when he, um, he learned that he had made a mistake, he kind of turned around and said, you guys are right. Uh, the, 
what I had suggested was incorrect, and he was incredibly gracious. He, let, he wrote letters of recommendation for me saying, this guy has proved me wrong. And when I left Cambridge in 1988, after my PhD, he uh, gave me a copy of his book with a uh, dedication saying to Ray, who told me that the arrow of time, who convinced me the arrow of time was not a boomerang. <laughs> so, you know what? Boomerangs mean a lot for you. Let me ask you this. We're all thinking about Stephen Hawking in our own way, whether we've read the book or whether we've seen, you know, a movie with the actor from, uh, from England who played his role. He touched a lot of people. And you started by saying that he had that way about him. Will that legacy, do you think, continue? Is there another Stephen Hawking who will inspire us, who will continue to keep us thinking about our world and our space? So I don't think there'll be another Stephen Hawking, somebody, a brilliant mind, um, kind of uh, imprisoned in a, in a body who doesn't function like the one that all of us have, but somebody who has this incredible stamina, this joy of life and pushing to do contribution in many ways. So I don't think we'll have another Stephen Hawking, but there are other people in the world which are inspiring in different ways. Mm -hmm. So. We will have to, uh, again, celebrate and re reflect this incredible person that Stephen was and learn from him. Uh, I, you know what? I want to thank you for your time and thank you for sharing your stories. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Pleasure to me, too. And to Stephen, I'm sure. Yes. Friend and former doctoral student of Stephen Hawking, Raymond Laflamme. We reached him in Waterloo, Ontario.